Hey everybody, this is Christian Buckley doing another MVP Buzz Chat. I'm talking today with Lewis. Hello. Hi, Christian. Thanks so much for having me. So Lewis, for folks that don't know you, who are you, where are you, and what do you do? Yeah, um, I'm Lewis Baber. I am a recent, um, or as of recently, a Microsoft Business Applications MVP. I'm also a Power Platform Consultant and working at a Microsoft Partner in the UK. That's very, very cool. So when you talk about uh, business applications, MVP, like what does that mean? What's kind of your focus in the business app space? So I'm mainly sort of around the power platform space, slightly less Dynamics 365, but I sort of do dabble in that a little bit in the, in the sort of customer engagement side. Um, so mainly like the low code space, power apps, power automate, you know, data analytics and power BI, all of that kind of fun stuff. You know, it can be confusing for folks because there are people who are in the power platform place uh, space that you just mentioned that are more on the Dynamics 365 yeah, side of things. Absolutely. There are the business applications, there are data platform MVPs. Mm. Um, and of course, once you're an MVP and you're in the space, like I'm in M365 uh, apps and services, and there's a lot of us that are mm. focused on uh, the, the power platform as well. And mm. so, you know, it, the, the, the focus of those areas where you come in might be different mm. from what you eventually go and do for for mm. folks that are wondering and seeing like kind of the, the the different areas that people come in through. So so what what are you doing like what's your day job like? Um so I mainly focus on I I'm primarily on delivery. Um so I do slightly less of the architecture kind of side of like designing solutions. I'm more um the actual developer when it comes to delivering solutions for our customers. Um, so, you know, I'm, I primarily work with Power Apps and Power Automate, um, you know, delivering Canvas apps, model driven app solutions, which so sort of touches on the Dynamics 365 side a little bit. Um, I occasionally do sort of step into the Power BI side. I don't really um, that often come across Power Virtual Agents or Power Pages yet. Mm. Um, but so I'm, I'm mainly sort of focused on the Canvas app, model driven app, Power Automate and Power BI sort of, sort of areas. You know, one of the things I, there's so many great stories of people that were, came even from non-technical backgrounds that kind of mm. discovered Power Platform and have, are building careers out of it. It's a really rapidly growing community area, uh, of, of course. Mm. And there's a lot of great folks that were former MVPs that are now inside of Microsoft that are helping drive like that. Like Heather Cook, for example, that runs in mm. engineering, does all the evangelism around uh, community for Power Platform is a former MVP and longtime friend. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know that as a brand new MVP, one of the things that you'll uh, you'll hear from a lot of people, I'm sure you're already hearing in the last week um, from people wondering, like, what was your path? How did you become an MVP? What else can I do? What are the best practices? So what are kind of your answers for that? Yeah, so I suppose I'll sort of, you know, start at the beginning of my journey because um, it, it hasn't been that that long yet. Um, so I sort of stumbled upon this space a little bit by accident. It wasn't really me going and finding it. It was more, um, someone kind of asked me to take a look at something and, and here we are. Um, so I was doing, um, over COVID, um, I used to be a performance swimmer, um, for my local performance swimming club. Um, and I stepped out of that just before COVID hit. Um, and so the swimmers across our club, they basically went into doing like online Zoom based um, fitness sessions with our coaches. Mm -hmm. um, but I was sort of still around at the club. I was doing some volunteering before COVID hit on full side. Um, but, you know, once COVID hit, that was completely gone. Um, and I wasn't going to be the coach that was there leading an online fitness session because I wasn't, you know, qualified in that, that area. Um, but I did manage to get in touch with um, some of our club committee and our treasurer, who I started helping um, with a little bit of administration and just day to day club running sort of tasks. Um, but I think one of the first things that I noticed quite quickly was that we didn't have any sort of like, you know, one platform for email, for collaboration, for just storing files, anything. We were all using like personal email addresses. You know, there was nothing in place. Mm -hmm. um, so I basically, you know, did, did, did a bit of research and went and found Microsoft 365 and basically said, hey, have we got a little bit of spare money for this? And can I give it a go and implement it? 
And, you know, it took like a couple of weeks of me going, oh, yeah, by the way, we still need to look at this. <laughs> um, but then eventually they were like, OK, yeah, go for it. Um, and then I think I had uh, like everyone's mailboxes migrated, um, you know, uh, teams deployed and all of that kind of stuff within like a couple of days. And then we just built on from that. Um, but then at the same sort of time, I was in sort of... Uh, um, sixth form in the UK or uh, in I think other places in the world just called high school um, so the US I know they call it high school yep. um, and they you know in, in sixth form you take a, our school took a very holistic approach to learning so you weren't just there to you know go to your different classes and lessons and learn the subject you'd also get stuff like you'd hear about volunteering opportunities um, and all sorts of kind of extra stuff like that um, and, you know, you get the kind of stuff like I could help out with a coffee bar at lunch or you could do some litter picking, all sorts of stuff. But I was like, well, hey, I've got these extra skills that I've gained um, through doing some stuff over COVID. And whilst, you know, my my school cohort was completely written off because we were like that one at the end of our um, uh, program. And they basically said, well, we'll give you predicted grades and you don't need to do anything else. So I didn't do I had nothing to do over that period. So I was like, well, hey. I use this time to, to to look at some stuff with Microsoft 365 and I know you're a Microsoft school. So is there anything I can help with there? And they basically said, well, over COVID, we um, obviously some students have fallen behind and that kind of stuff. And we're now, um, you know, covering this tutoring initiative uh, that's sort of funded by the government where for those students who have fallen behind, we're providing extra support to them. But we have no way to you know log all of that data book in sessions mm -hmm. um make safeguarding reports if there's an incident and um, keep track of progress and all of that kind of stuff and they were like but we've seen this button in microsoft 365 that says power apps mm -hmm. and we have this sql server over here so we've got some data on these students because they're all part of our existing trust anyway um we basically want you to try and build something that will let us you know solve our problems here and I was like okay well this is like you know a big step forward than what I've figured out so far but I said hey look I'll look at it and and see what I can do and this was alongside my um high school sixth form studies that I was you know doing as as normal yeah which is like your hey, well it's it's like doing a side project while having a full-time job yeah yeah so literally yeah. exactly <laughs> like that 100% um so I went away and you know I my first sort of month or so I was like Hey, they want they want to you know keep all this data in SQL, which I haven't ever seen. They haven't given me access to. Mm -hmm. um, somehow I need to try and figure that out. It looks like I have to pay for licenses for that. That's not even free. Um, so I'm real stuck on how to actually get started at the moment. And then eventually I just thought, okay, I'm watching these YouTube videos. People are, you know, creating these SharePoint lists and tying them to Canvas apps and just starting to build something. I was like, you know what? Let's give it a go. Let's not worry about, you know, what they've said to start with. Let's just actually figure something out first. And then I can go back to them and be like, well, hey, we could do it like this instead, because your volume of data isn't actually that huge. Mm -hmm. So you know, this is an option. Um, and they didn't want to pay for licenses, of course, because, you know, in education, there's just not the funding for that. Right. Um, but then my, my, my journey sort of basically worked on from there. I continued to um, develop my skills in Power Platform, and I ended up building, well, they did actually pay for licenses in the end, by the way. Yeah. Uh, so I did actually end up building a Dataverse solution for them um, with a model-driven app user interface um, and some Power Automate in the back end. You know, we did some Power BI reporting as well. Um, and that was my first sort of um, solution with them. And then um, I got in touch with another team um, that's part of our, that was part of our trust. Um, and they were the D data and digital services team. And I was almost kind of like an employee alongside my, um, my my studies, um, but I basically became part of that team, and we built something like ten solutions on Power Platform across um, our multi academic trust. Yeah. Um, so so it was awesome, and I kind of knew someone from my swim club um, who was one of the directors at the Microsoft partner I work for now, and basically just ended up working at a Microsoft partner straight out of school, mm -hmm. and that's where my journey sort of continued from. I mean, I did also have, um, just before I went into that position, 
Um, I I had one of my solu solutions from my school featured on um, Microsoft's Less Code More Power, and mm -hmm. um, so that was really cool doing um, a webcast with Donna Sarka. Um, so that was awesome. And then now I've basically I sort of started my blog at the beginning. Ooh, of last year or maybe December of the year before I think it was actually Boxing Day <laughs> on of 2021 the Christmas yeah. Day um, of the year before so I've been yeah. going just a little over of over than a year um, so that's sort of where my community work started um, and then I just sort of started engaging more and more with the community um, last year I spoke at Microsoft Ignite which was awesome mm -hmm. you know I'm this year I'm doing 365 blog posts across 360 65 days which is hey, quite... i'm on i'm on uh month 17 i just wrapped up doing the exact same thing i'm going for oh summer. really yeah oh that's yeah. awesome i definitely need to go check as that out, you honey. know uh, you know how hard that is to do that oh it yeah is. absolutely do you, do you know uh tracy vanderskiff out of south africa fellow mvp um, it rings a bell yeah so tracy did that her so she has that mark i'm going for 731 so i can beat tracy uh, <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, so it's a, yeah, we should have a separate conversation around that and, yeah. you know, and, and, and uh, it takes a lot of prep and uh, obviously you know, ongoing, but that's very cool. You know, I, I was just thinking though, how it's a couple thoughts, like one, no one talks about the fast track from swimming to power platform. Why yeah. is no one talking about that? You yeah. know? <laughs> yeah, 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 absolutely. We, we, we need more swimmers in tech. I mean, come on. Um, yeah, exactly. It's a bit of an it's a, an unheard story, I suppose, a little bit. Um, you know, there was definitely that huge bit in the middle of of my school that helped out so so much. Um, but, but there's something yeah. to be said about uh, about taking. I mean, there's a difference when you're learning something is kind of on the side and it's extracurricular. When mm -hmm. you're able to fold it into your day job, or or in your case, you know, into your schoolwork and doing something on the side, where you're actually living through it. I mean, that's one of the problems when. Uh, I always advise companies that are looking at trialing technologies, like don't mm. do a throwaway or a fake project to test. Like oh, you have to pilot yeah. with something that's real that mm, has, absolutely. you know, you have a desired outcomes that you, it, 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 there's meaning behind going and investigating that, that, that solution, but you mm. learn so much better when you apply it. Like I, I started my first company, um, a real company with co-founders was started during graduate school. So again, it started as projects. It started as theoretical. Mm -hmm. And then we said, Hey, this is actually an idea for a business. And we mm -hmm. went and, and, and started down that path. And again, you, when you, when you are putting kind of everything into that, which part of that, that, that work practice, and you think about it differently than you do if it's throw away or, you know, uh, not a real mm -hmm. pilot. Yeah, I mean, it It was so great that obviously I've gained so many skills through doing that and I've gained a career out of it. And they, you know, have been left with um, like 10 solutions that, yeah, they didn't need to hire like a really expensive developer for. So I think it's a bit of a win win there. Um, I mean, you know, they might not have like the most amazing like having a governance piece around it and all sorts like that. Um, but I, I still believe that that even now with my knowledge now, those solutions are still really quite good for what for what they need. Um, and yeah, they're very basic level, but you know, to match their requirements, they then they're not bad. Well, that, um, hey, so that's that's part of uh, you know being a consultant as well is is going 100%. back. I don't know if you're still advising them, if you're doing any work still on the solutions that you developed. But as the technology changes, as their requirements mature, there might be other opportunities for you to go back in as a consultant and and help yeah, them absolutely. and you know yeah. and, uh, and and then another common consulting thing which you, you'll experience a lot of and uh, is that uh, you know they don't provide the upkeep that's necessary and so it gets messier yeah. and then they yeah. then they need to hire you back in to clean up you know yeah. their their lack of governance and management of those solutions so yeah, there's exactly. lots of opportunities yeah 100 percent. you know you know they not everyone will know about that piece of like let's not just let everyone go crazy and not you know lock anything down but still give them that empowerment to do to do stuff with the technology right. you know they might just say okay here have everything and then they find oh well we actually want to do this properly now and it looks like a bit of a mess <laughs> yeah. yep well very cool so so uh, from a community standpoint like what are you doing out in the the community i mean you're blogging you've done ignite i mean doing a session hanging out with donna sarkar i mean that's a big way to kick off your community career that's all yeah, very cool. Absolutely. 
Um, yeah. But what what's kind of your uh, your what are your community activities? What are you doing out there right now? Yeah. So I mean, obviously that webcast with Donna was was fantastic to kick things off, and I'm, I'm really grateful to her for that. Um, so that that was awesome. And then obviously I've started my blog as well. I mean, I'm running um, a user group in my local area for Power Platform and Dynamics 365 which is quite cool. We have um, sessions with MVP speaking, with community contributors speaking, with all sorts. Um, and these are people that aren't just like completely technical. They're people that are in like the finance industry and work closely on Power BI sort of stuff. And um, so not everyone's like from a technical background, which is quite cool. So we do have like quite a good range of sessions. Um, I'm also co-chairing um, NHS Empower this year um, with someone else in the community and someone from Microsoft. Um, and it's basically sort of an initiative and a community piece to um, empower the um, public NHS workforce, which is the National Health Service in the UK, um, and and give them something else, you know, um, to, that they can look at uh, alongside their their sort of frontline um, them their work. And um, we're also sort of um, planning to do stuff. We're planning to do stuff like uh, daily or weekly lunch and learns, all sorts of stuff. I love this. Um, you know, you know hacks um all sorts of stuff that can give them that little extra bit and also allow um, the wider community to pitch in um volunteer for different events um you know they can suggest solutions that they might want to um offer to to the internal community of the nhs on power platform mm -hmm. and all sorts of stuff so that's a really cool thing that i've been lucky enough to be invited to do this year um Oh, I'm trying to think of some other, all oh, the the other stuff. I mean, you know, you know, you get that um sort of list of stuff that you've got to fill out when you're nominated for. for the I know we're yeah, it's the annual review process and go through. Oh, wow. kind of, I've heard. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, yeah, the the because you've got to add everything in the online form and don't leave it to the end recommendation because yeah. everybody's on there. It slows down the system. It's painful. Like get it done as early as possible. Yeah, I think I'm just going to try and keep my activities like up to date as I go on. That's the um, best way to do it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've done um, a couple of other things as well. Like I've, I've done a couple of um, webcasts um, and virtual roundtables, um, you know, different things like that in the community, which is quite yeah. cool as well. Um, so yeah, quite varied stuff. I'm I'm probably missing out quite quite a lot. I know that my um, activities is going across like four or five pages, um, so I'm definitely missing probably quite a lot. But yeah, that's yeah a little bit of an overview. Well, that's a. It, I mean, if you're attempting to do the 365 and 365, then uh, yeah, it's a pace yourself. I mean, you're doing a lot that is right there. But well, yeah. Lewis, I really appreciate the the time you took to uh, to get to know you and learn about some of your activities. For folks that want to reach out and connect with you, what are the best ways to find you and reach out to you? Yeah, absolutely. You can. I've been mean, best way is to head over to my blog, lowcodelewis.com. Um, I've got my links for LinkedIn, Twitter, all sorts like that on there. Uh, my tagline is low code Lewis. So you'll find me on Twitter like that as well. Um, I mean, Google search for that. You can probably great see handle. That well. that's easy. So, yep. That's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Tagline low code Lewis. <laughs> well, Lewis it was great connecting and we'll talk to you soon. Awesome. Thank you so much, Christian. Ah!